So normally I love a nice stroll down our very long driveway down to the garden, but I can literally see the rain falling in the distance. And I'm gonna drive my car down the driveway <laughs> because I'm carrying my camera. If I, were, if I were not carrying my camera, I actually don't mind getting caught in the rain. But it, I don't know if it's coming this direction. I wouldn't mind if it did. It would save me the chore of having to water the garden this evening. But I definitely don't want it to water my camera. I can feel it in the air and smell it. The rain. Thunder back in those clouds. Y'all, it's so interesting um, doing YouTube and sharing to people who live all over the world in so many different places. I love posting little clips of thunderstorms and rain because so many people say they never really get to experience that. It's a rare thing where they, they are. I've always lived in places that had a lot of thunderstorms in Arkansas and then, in, then here. And it's interesting to me because it's, it's normal, but I'm learning to appreciate it. Okay, so I came out here for peppers. These are Serranos that have turned red. There's some green ones, I'm gonna pick both. Jalapenos of some variety. I'm not 100% sure which one this is. There's some down here too. They've kind of got a blackishness to them. That's pretty normal, um, but I, I don't know what variety that is. And I'm gonna set you guys up on a time lapse so I can pick these really fast before I run out of time. Time lapse pause. I just found something very exciting. So I had planted peppers in the high tunnel and then just took some of the excess plants and stuck them out here and I'm really glad I did. Now my peppers are recovering in the high tunnel with the uh, applications of worm compost tea. I'm hoping to still get pretty good harvest out there. We have pulled some things out of there. But these out here, I wasn't 100% what I, sure what I planted. It was mostly jalapenos, but I didn't know the varieties. But I just came upon this, look. These are pumpkin spice um, jalapenos, and they ripen to bright orange. Isn't that beautiful? And I've got quite a few of them here. Very cool. So the rest of these green ones on this plant, I'm gonna leave on here green because I'd like to wait and harvest them orange. It's coming. See that? You see the rain over there? I know to start paying attention that my time's running out when the animals start moving in undercover. Storms make me feel alive. We got the pullet flock up here with the new coop. And of course these birds aren't laying yet, but they're very close and they're very happy to be in this space with their new coop. So this flock is all copper morans, Americanas, um, some blue laced red Wyandots and whiting true blue and greens. These are our spring chicks from Murray McMurray Hatchery. So they're gonna lay a very colorful basket of eggs. There's one of the roosters right there, an Americana, he's really pretty. And there's another that I suspect is a rooster, which is a copper moran. And that's just exactly what we were hoping for. So, so if you want a flock of like barnyard mix, but that lay colorful eggs, if you get like a good dark brown egg layer like a Moran, which these from Murray McMurray, they have they have good lines. Their Morans lay really nice dark eggs. And then some, I've got the Whiting True Blue, the Whiting True Green, the Americanas. Crossing those will get different shades of brown and green. So basically you could hatch the eggs from this flock and get like a really beautiful egg basket. Oh, here it comes. The mixes of those chickens are gonna lay really pretty eggs in different shades of blue, green, and brown. And if you're wanting to raise chickens and sell eggs for money, you will make more money selling hatching eggs than you will eating eggs. So 
doing stuff like that, having hatching eggs that have an appeal if you don't want to get into like pure breeding. Colorful eggs are where it's at. Okay, so I have a couple of jalapeno plants in here that I came in to pick from. Say the worm teas are helping. The plants are small, but they do have a lot of fruit on them. These Lesia peppers from Baker Creek are so good. I should have known that wasn't a big enough bucket. I was really only coming out for the jalapenos because I wanted to make some cowboy candy and the rosemary because I wanted to do some infused honey and I was trying to beat the rain. And now I'm seeing all these other things I could pick and I only brought this tiny bucket. What a newbie mistake. Here's some loaded down shishito plants. And I really wanna show you guys how to make delicious roasted shishito peppers. So I might just have to stuff my pockets. There we go. Maybe I've got something in my car I can hold stuff in. Oh, how convenient. I forgot I found this basket the other day on clearance at the store for $5. <laughs> and here it is in my moment of need. All right. You know what this means? I can pick more peppers. So these are actually not a Pinos, which don't have any heat to them. And I'm gonna put these in a separate basket and maybe make some cowboy candy that's mild. Do like a separate batch of it. So the other day, Will bit into a pepper in a video that we thought was an Ajvarsky. And you guys have all told me now that there's no way that that was a Ajvarsky because that's actually a very uh, sweet stuffing pepper and it's not spicy at all. And that pepper was spicy. So I am assuming that I planted that like Sometimes we use seeds that people send us that they save from their garden. And I am assuming that that was just seeds that were crossed. I don't mind whenever stuff gets cross pollinated in the garden. Um, you know, I prefer saving seeds even if there is a risk of that. And it is a bummer when you bite into something expecting it to be mild and it's spicy. But ultimately, that's like the worst thing that can happen. I hear a lot of people really stressing out about stopping cross-pollinating happening in their garden. And if you have a variety that you really want to make sure maintains purity and does not get crossed, then you definitely want to like isolate the blossoms, put a little mesh bag or something like that over it to keep them from crossing with any other peppers that are close or tomatoes, you know, whatever the, the plant you're talking about is. But um, I usually just save the seeds. I'm a little willy nilly about it. And most of the time things breed true, most of the time. Sometimes you get crosses and sometimes it's a delightful surprise. Sometimes it's a hot pepper when you expect a sweet one. I'm also noticing now that this Edgevarsky plant is planted very closely to this which is called crimson lee and i think this might be what we actually ate the other day and this i think is a hot pepper i don't know i just googled it and the crimson lee says mildly spicy i don't, I don't think the one that will grabbed was this big Yeah, that's not super spicy. That is delicious. Mmm. Crimson Lee. Mmm, no, there's the heat. <laughs> oh, golly. Yeah, that's got a cake to it. It is very good, though. Very, very good. This would be good cooked into something to cut that heat. I feel like these might make a good hot sauce. Because they have some really rich... Oh, that's definitely what he ate the other day. Will, you didn't eat a Jvarsky. You ate Crimson Lee. Here's a Jvarsky. Look how that's shaped. That one's not spicy. That is definitely spicy. I just took another bite out of it, and it's... I'm feeling it. I think these roasted 
and ground down would make a really really nice hot sauce because it is really sweet and flavorful and then it's got a lot of heat behind it not a lot keep in mind the hottest pepper i grow is habanero I'm not a spicy person so if you're out there like chomping on reapers you'd probably be like ha 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 but to me this has got some spice to it, it would be a good hot sauce here are you watching out over the basket here's another crimson leaf plant they kind of got mixed up Well, actually, now I'm remembering properly. I think we'll pick the pepper up here, and it does say it's Varsky, but looking at it, it looks a lot more like this other one. So I think we might have somehow mixed up a tag. Hey, Bear, come on, man. Come get in the car. All right, I got a few more of those. That's a nice little haul. That'll keep me busy this afternoon. Why didn't you get me my banana pepper? Why didn't I get you banana peppers? I just didn't know that you wanted them. Here, carry that for me. Oh, shoot. Hey, um, can you please just take that into the house? You can carry it. It's not too heavy. What happened? I'm going to pick something. I just saw this tomato, and I want to get it before it rains because it will cause it to split. Already has a little bit of splitting there, but that's okay. It will also taste better without being watered down by the rain. Look at that nice little pepper haul. There's still lots more out there, too like your banana peppers. All right, so Maya just reminded me that he needs me to go to the store. I'm going to do the rosemary honey, and then I'm gonna do this other stuff later, but I will video it. All right, so I've gotta get my rosemary from the bottom of my bucket. <laughs> Scooch those guys out of the way. the fragrance going on right here is so nice so I am just going to take this rosemary off of the stem and chop it and then mix it in with honey it really is that easy if you like Google how to do infused herb infused honeys um, sometimes they'll tell you to simmer the honey with the herbs and I am not doing that because this honey is raw and I don't want to cook it um, because raw honey has benefits. So I'm just going to make a pint of this today and I will mix the chopped herbs, rosemary, you could use other herbs, um, in with the honey and let it sit in the dark pantry for a couple weeks before I use it. Hey Asher. Hey. What's up man? You making yourself some hot tea? This is good on meats. Like you could put it on like roast chicken. Uh, you could mix it into tea. It would be really nice mixed in tea. That's kind of what I had in mind for it, was using it like that. And I haven't tried rosemary um, honey for this, but I really love chili infused honey on like pizza and stuff like that. So I just, I'm gonna experiment with this and try it in some different things. I'd say that's probably enough right here. Two sprigs. This is gonna come down to preference. I don't think there's really a right or wrong way to do this. I love a lot of herbs. I love really herby food. All right, so let's just do. Okay, so I have my honey right here. I actually also have a jar of pickles I just pulled out of the pantry because Benjamin asked me to open one for him. I've been telling him no. I mean, they needed to sit for a couple weeks, but does anybody else hate opening their canning while it's still canning season? You're like trying to build this up. So, honey, empty jar, and what I'm going to do is just kind of layer this in and try not to make much of a mess. The kettle's going in the background. I hope that's not too loud. So I actually buy honey in five gallon buckets. In Arkansas, we would buy it from our friends Katie and Elvis at Brothers Honey in Conway. Um, but, you know, I just, I've, I looked around here until I found somebody that I could order it from. Um, sometimes, you know, supply can be somewhat limited, but by buying a five gallon bucket, you've got about 60 pounds of honey and then you can separate it into quarts and if you use honey much at all like if you're making much herbal medicine and using honey or if you use it in cooking it can really add up in cost 
especially now to buy it in quartz at the store. So that's something to kind of keep in mind if you're wanting to look around for a way to save on that. Okay, now I'm gonna just mix that all together. Well, I wanna say hi. What is it on? It's on. Hello. We've been playing I'm rough. Back. Okay. Not rough, but we're pickles. Playing. Pickles. You sealed it. Okay. All right. Ooh, those are stout. Can we seal that with water? Sealed it? Yeah, yeah. sealed it with water in the water bath canner. That's so it's weird. It's the water butter. It makes it hot. And then that's a pickle. Pickle. All right, you ready? Thank you. Yes. Sour. Sour? Hey, Toby. Hello, I'm sour, but pickle. Good pickle? Pickly. Those are good. Ben is the only pickle eater of all my boys. More for me. All right, so for this, uh, I'm just gonna mix this top in. All right, that's what it looks like. And just, I'm gonna put the lid on this and stick it in the pantry. If anybody has any other suggestions of things you like to infuse honey with, I am all ears because I, I think it'd be really cool to try different things. Well guys, I've got to go to the store. I will make a video this evening whenever I start processing all these peppers and I'll keep you in the loop on that. So thank you for hanging out with me today. I bless you until next time.